The Chord Whisperer. Right, now Paul has written a song called Here, There and Everywhere. What is that? Oh, I don't know what it is. It's just so beautiful. It's so sad, that half diminished chord. Because the tune is on a B. So that's a tough chord to call. That could be... Um, a B flat nine could be an F sharp half diminished extended up. Um, it, it's a beautiful chord and it and it's quite exotic. Let's just have a look at it here. Here's that moment. We have a f introduction here. Then we have a fairly conventional. Start again. This looks like a McCartney song. I would put this in the McCartney pile, uh, and then this. So C to F sharp half diminished is not too far away. So maybe we get away with it because of that, because of the similarity between F sharp half diminished and C. So you can play it where there's only one note difference between a C major 7 and this F sharp half diminished. The F sharp half diminished to B is a nice fifth. So that's kind of fine. Uh, let's say this is one of those beautiful examples that just flows out. I am not in, ever suggesting with any of these analyses that composers or songwriters are sitting down with the chords first and putting chords into places and then putting a melody over the top. You, you, that's not how a song is written. You don't sit down and think, I know, I want to write a song in G and I really, really want a modulation to the subdominant that's prepared with a half diminished chord. It's crazy. That is not, we know that's not how these songs are written. So, it is really lovely to come to analyse them after the event and be like, why does that work or why does that sound unusual? Sometimes you just have to hold your hands up and say, good on you for finding that chord in that moment because it's perfect. It's what I'm going to do now. Uh, a nice fall back from F sharp back to what looks like setting up a chorus in the tonic because we have a D7 chord there, or a D chord there, it should go to G. So let's find out where it should have gone. And it does, it goes back to the verse for the second verse, but um, now we have another fabulous unprepared modulation. Rip up the rule book and just prepare yourself. It's like an interrupted cadence. You can't play a B flat over a D seven. Well, you, no, you can play a B flat over the over a B seven. But we're still very much feeling like we're in G, and then suddenly, like boom, B flat major. Uh, and then once we're in B flat major, this is fairly standard. I mean, B flat major closely related to G minor, so it would be less of a lurch to call that first chord a G minor, I suppose. Mm. 
because the next time it comes around it is a G minor. That is a G minor. So actually, I think this chorus is in G minor. But a, a crashing... So of course it sounds fine when you, when you do it like that, and it sounds fine in context because we know it. But we saw this in, in the last song that we looked at, like an uplift into the chorus, a change of key but not prepared, and not going somewhere too wild, you know, it's still sort of within our, within our chart. Uh, then we know we've got to get back. So we've got to get back to G major. Uh, actually not too tricky because, as I said, B flat major is the relative major of G minor. And if we play G minor and then it's dominant, then we can just sort of slip back into G major. And maybe nobody noticed. And I think that's pretty much exactly what he did. Now we're in G minor, not that B flat chord. crashed into B flat major from G major without any warning. We then subtly substituted B flat major for its relative minor, G minor, which just happens to be the minor of the original key, G major. We then tootle around with a couple of, with one perfect cadence in G minor, and then the next time it's a perfect cadence in G minor, it's not, it's G major, and we're back to the start. That's how we get away with it. The one thing we don't know, well, I don't know, because I can't remember, is what these songs sounded like the first time I heard them. Because now they're so familiar when these changes come. It's the unusual moments, it's the moments that don't fit, that, that make them sound so unique and incredible. And those moments like, oh God, that's so great. The first time we heard them, did I, was I just a bit like, eh. You tell me. Maybe you never heard these songs before. Um, it, it, familiarity is so important for our understanding of music. That is not for now. That is a rabbit hole. I ain't going down. Thank you, Mr. McCartney. Here, there, and everywhere was a delight. The Core.